Hey guys, welcome to DIY Wednesday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the automatic fish feeder. Everyone has one in their fish room. If you have more than one tank, you probably have more than one feeder. And what gets really expensive when you have lots and lots of automated feeders? Batteries. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to take an automated fish feeder like this and convert it into something that no longer requires batteries. So stay tuned for episode number 308, where we learn how to be a better aquarist. All right guys, so we're here at the workbench and we have all of our pieces laid out. And what I wanted to do was walk through exactly what I did in order to get this to work. So the first thing you need to do is open up whatever automatic fish feeder you have and figure out what kind of batteries it takes. In my case, mine takes two AA batteries and those are in series and so that ends up being uh, a total of three volts. 1.5 volts per battery. Essentially what that means is all I need to do is pick up a 3 volt adapter and that's what you see here. This happens to also be 700 milliamp. You can also get it uh, rated at 1 amp and uh, depending on how high that number is is going to determine how many automatic fish feeders you can run off of one adapter. Anyways, so we have our two batteries here. Essentially what we want to do is get rid of these from the equation and instead hook up this adapter to the automatic fish feeder itself. I'm going to pause here for a second guys and just uh, give a little disclaimer that uh, water and electricity do not mix very well and the reason why every automatic fish feeder you see is battery powered is because if this falls in the water it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, you know, the amount of energy that a battery holds is nothing compared to the amount of energy that's passing through your wall. So something like this needs to be done safely. So if you're not prepared uh, to approach a project like this safely, uh, please don't continue uh, with this video. But for everyone else who's curious what I did, uh, I took a uh, half inch dowel which just so happens to be about the same diameter as a double-a battery and I cut it to the exact same length as a double-a battery essentially what I'm doing is making a fake battery um, that I can then insert into my automatic fish feeder um, so that it takes up that space and still presses against the contacts and makes the electrical connection now what I've done is on one end of these dowels I placed a brass tack and brass is a pretty good conductor of electricity uh, it's also easy to solder so this is my container of thumbtacks and uh, you will need to make sure that you do get the brass thumbtacks as those are the ones that are going to solder really well and what I did was I took my wire I stripped off the end I wrapped it around the brass tack and then I soldered the wire to the brass tack and then I gently tap that into my wooden dowel to make my fake batteries. So you'll notice that this wire, one end, or uh, one wire is red, that's the positive, one wire is black, that's the negative, um, or the ground. And uh, essentially what we're going to do is line these up in the same way that you would line up your batteries um, in an automatic feeder and you place those inside your automatic feeder. In this case we have a little diagram right there which says that on the back side furthest from the camera we have our positive um, connecting and uh, then closer to us we have the negative connecting. So essentially what that means is we take our batteries I've labeled one positive, one negative and let's see if I can do this with one hand but what we're going to do is place those into the automatic fish feeder. And as you can see, it looks just like you would imagine if those were actual batteries. And there's a little bit of play here. And uh, the only other thing that I did was I notched out this side, which will allow me to move my wires uh, over here and allow me to close this lid uh, onto the back. Now once that's done, what we have here is the other end of this wire and uh, again those have been stripped back. This is a CCTV plug and uh, this is the female end 
You can get packs of these on Amazon. You get the female end and the male end. Those connect together. Our adapter here has the male end of the plug and uh, the, the automatic fish feeder has the female end of the plug. You plug those in and uh, then your fish feeder will have power. Now it's important to note that the positive and the positive and the negative and the negative need to be correct here. Um, so you'll see that the positive, the red wire, is here and of course the positive uh, is also in there and then uh, you can actually test um, your adapter for which one is positive and which one is negative by using a multimeter and so what we've done here is just marked uh, with a sharpie which one is the negative and which one is the positive um, if you get those reversed it's best to test those with a multimeter first before you end up plugging something in uh, because you could do damage to some of the electronics so anyways that's kind of how it works that those are the components and how it's assembled well, let's go test it out on an aquarium and see how it works alright guys and here's the finished product if we press the button you'll see that it operates just like it would on battery power it turns you can press the buttons and program this feeder to go off multiple times per day and it's all being run off of this 3 volt adapter that you see on the floor and uh, for safety's sake we've attached this to the side of the uh, aquarium rack to make sure that there's no way that there's any slack in this power line to make sure that there's no way that it could fall uh, into the aquarium so again we want to be safe with something like this um, because we do have power so close to the aquarium and uh, it's not insulated or waterproof so we want to make sure that we are as safe as possible uh, when something like this is done it's only three volts so it's not like it's going to kill you uh, you know it's not like it's a hair dryer or anything like that uh, it might bother the fish if, uh, if, if, a, if one of these lines did enter the aquarium Obviously, we, don't, we want to avoid that because we don't want to cause any fire hazards. We don't want to uh, uh, stress the fish out unnecessarily, and we don't want to shock ourselves uh, if we get our hand in there uh, with electricity. So again, be careful when you do something like this, but I just wanted to show that it definitely is possible, and, uh, and it's pretty easy to do. So that's what we got going on. The fish feeder works with no batteries. If you're going on vacation, if you have multiple tanks, if you have multiple fish feeders, consider something like this as uh, more of a permanent install um, if you are going away for a longer period of time or if you're just sick and tired of buying batteries like I am. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button down below. And if you've already done that, and you want to do this project next, the links to all of the products in this build are in the description of this video. So please check that out. It all goes to help support this channel and to help you be a better aquarist. Thanks.